Hey there, artists. Today we're going to draw this really cool flying bat jack-o'-lantern. And it's especially fun this spooky time of year. All you need is a pencil, some paper, and maybe something to color with when you're done. And we're going to head to the drawing board in a minute. But if you enjoy this video and you want to see more just like it, you know what to do. Let's go to the drawing board. Really easy. All you need is a piece of paper, a pencil, and an eraser. I also have this big fat gummy eraser. It's cool. Don't eat it just because I said gummy. It's an eraser. And that's it. So I've got my paper tape down. This is watercolor paper. I'm going to do a little step-by-step -step watercolor painting uh, on this piece when we're done. But if you don't have watercolors, you can use whatever you want to color with when you're finished. So you can have drawing paper or whatever here if you don't want to do the watercolor painting. But what we're going to do first off is we're going to make a circle right in the middle of our paper and I'm just going to use a cup and whatever you have handy you can use and we're just going to go around it and we're going to trace it about halfway. You don't have to go all the way around because we're going to do something to the bottom of this guy that makes him extra spoopy. Okay, take the cup off and there you go. And I drew this a little bit darker so you guys could see but you don't have to draw that dark because if you draw nice and light then it's really easy to erase if you make a mistake. If you draw too dark and too heavy and then you try to erase it, you get that, um, you know, that pencil blur or whatever. It never seems to come completely off. But once we have that, we're going to go, I'm going to make this circle come down a little bit more. And then wherever you want to cut it off for your pumpkin, we're just going to start from there and we're going to make some U shapes. And stick with me, I know this doesn't remind you of a normal jack-o'-lantern, but you'll get the idea here in a second. Whoa, that's a big one. Okay, and the nice thing again about drawing light is if you have to, you can just erase, ta-da, and then you can make your line over again until you're happy with it. All right, whatever you have left down here after you made your little use, we're going to erase that as well. So I'm going to erase this side. So go ahead and erase those so that all you have left is something like this. Kind of looking like a parachute the way it is right now, huh? Now, our bat is going to have a um, bat, bat a lantern, jacko bat. I don't know. You can call it whatever you want. But our winged jack-o'-lantern, he's got to have a stem because all pumpkins grow in a pumpkin patch and they got a big green stem on them. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, not quite in the middle, but a little bit over because we want to make them a little funky. And I'm just going to draw a line that kind of curves off to the side. Okay. And once you get that one, we're going to come down a little bit and we're going to draw another line that's shaped the same that matches it, but not as long. So something like that. All right, and then we're gonna connect them with a slight U shape to the side. And then we're gonna come and we're gonna connect the other line with almost like a rainbow shape. Okay, so now that kind of looks 3D like we cut the pumpkin's top off. And let's put a line or two in here, jaggly line, a couple of lines. So that kind of indicates the the stem shape, you know, because they're kind of bumpy. All right, from there, what we want to do is we want to make the lines in our pumpkin. And we're going to go, we're going to follow this first little U shape, and where it comes to a point and meets the next one, we're just going to go from there and we're going to follow the curve of the pumpkin up to the top with our line. So something like that. Okay. And then we're going to come over to the other side and we're going to do the same thing, but it's going to curve like this. And kind of curve in toward the top. Okay. And then we're going to stay on that side and we're going to make another curve line. And these, these lines are going to get closer together to the top. And we're going to do the same thing with this one, but curved in a little bit like that. Okay. Now, are you starting to see it? It looks like we have half of a pumpkin cut off. And we just kind of emphasize these lines where the sections are to make it a little, you know, a little more cool looking instead of just like a flat cut. 
All right, now that we have that, let's give them some creepy eyes. And you can start in here wherever you want. You can make one eye right in the middle, but we're gonna make two. You can make three if you want. It's your art, get crazy. But if you wanna follow along, I'm just gonna come in here around the second line in. So one, two, and I'm gonna make a slightly curved up shape like this. And then I'm gonna come down and make a big U underneath it and then get close up here and make a point like that. Got it? Okay, now let's go over here to the other line and I'm gonna do kind of the same thing over on this side. I'm gonna curve up that way. And then underneath, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna curve it back up this way. Oh yeah, he's looking kind of spoopy, all right. My granddaughter Kinsey always used to say spoopy when she was little, so I like to say it too. It's funny. All right, let's come in here and let's take these, uh, the pumpkin lines that go up out of our drawing because they don't need to be there anymore. So I'm gonna take that one out. And this one's got two. So I'm gonna take those out as well. Okay, now it starts to look like he's got some jack-o'-lantern eyes. And I'm gonna make this look a little more 3D, like somebody actually cut out a pumpkin and carved it. You know how you can see the inside of the, the rind of the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna come up here a little bit from this top point. I'm gonna come down a little, and I'm just gonna make a little curved line that kind of matches that. Kind of like you're looking in from an angle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this eye, but I'm gonna do it on the inside of the eye. Because kind of imagine if we're looking in this direction. So he's gonna get a little cut out too. Oh man, that is looking good. How's yours looking? Good, that sounds great, you guys. All right, now let's keep the creep factor going. We're gonna give him some bat wings, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down, I don't know, halfway or so, and you know, like a bat wing. So we're gonna make a U that comes out like a deuce. Actually, I'm gonna make mine a little bigger. Okay. And these are kind of funky bat wings. And then we're gonna come down and it's gonna curve like this. And then we're just gonna make rainbows. So you're gonna make one. And then you're gonna make another one, but you wanna come up a little bit because you want this to be um, not as wide as this. All right, now we're gonna come over on the other side and I'm just gonna kind of measure from here and just kind of guesstimate because it really doesn't matter if they're perfect because he's all funky and creepy anyway. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So we're gonna make one big swoop up like that. And then we're gonna make a curving line that comes down. And then we're gonna make two rainbow shapes. So one and then two. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think this one's a little wider here and here than this one is. So I'm just gonna make that a little closer to what we got. And don't worry about making mistakes or anything like that. When you're, when you're drawing, you can make all the mistakes you want. It's your art. There, that looks better. Okay. Now, we've got the basic line drawing done, so what we want to do is we want to take a black pen, we're going to trace over all our lines in black. Got that? Trace over all the lines you want to keep in black. If you don't want to keep a line, don't trace over it, because after this is done and it dries, we're going to erase all of the pencil lines that are left. Okay, I'm going to speed this up because you know how to outline, and then I'll meet you after that part is done. Okay, there's our spoopy pumpkin jack-o'-lantern bat flying thing. <laughs> how does yours look so far? Leave me a comment down below um, if you're enjoying this video, and what else you would like to see us draw on this channel I think you guys will have some pretty cool ideas and we can draw them and paint them together. All right, now that this is set and it's all dry, and be careful to make sure it is dry. Don't take your finger on air and smear it to see if it's dry or not, because if the ink's still wet, you'll smear it. But just give it a few minutes to dry and maybe you know, fan your hand over a little bit without touching it. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna erase everything. 
And I'm going to speed that up for you too because you don't need to see me erase the whole thing. There you go, gang, our finished inked drawing. Now, at this point, if you want, you can just leave it like that, call it done, sign your name on it, and show it off to all your friends. Or you can join me for the next step and you can color or paint it. Now, I'm going to do the painting part in watercolor so you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, with the watercolor set that I use. If you did not have watercolors and you just want to do crayons or colored pencil or markers, feel free to do that in any way that you want. But if you don't have watercolor paints, you can just stick around and watch so you can learn how to do it too when you get your set. Hey there everybody, we are back and we are going to do the painting part of our project now. And what I'm using is Arteza watercolors they are a very nice set and they're not super expensive. You see, I'm opening it up here and I made a little uh, color swatch. This comes in the paints and it's labeled each one and they kind of line up with all the paints here in the palette. So you can get a little test paint on here and see what it looks like. So you can pick from them when you're making your painting. So I'm just going to set this right above here so you can kind of see it. Let me tilt the camera a little bit so you can see that too. All right, now you can paint this however you want, whatever color you want, but for our purposes, I am going to go with um, a little bit of traditional colors on the pumpkin, especially because it is that time of year here as I'm recording this, that is Halloween time, of course. So I'm gonna use some orange to start off with. Now I got a cup of water here. Oh. Hold on, time out. Let me change that water. Look how gross that looks. That's from my last video. Hang on, I'll be right back. And I'm back. Whew. Okay, there's our clean water cup. You know that last video I was talking about was my creepy carrot with the kind of octopus tentacles. If you have not seen that video, I'll try to leave a link up here uh, so you can go to it after. And I'll also link it at the end of the video so you can just click on that if you want to go and check that one out. But since we're doing our pumpkin, like I said, we're going to start with orange. And I've got a very light orange here. This is called chrome orange. And I'm just going to get, I got some water on my brush. Bring it in a little bit. And then I picked up some paint. And all I'm going to do is a little base coat. I'm just going to start in here. And I'm just going to fill this in with color. Now, one thing that's really important to do with watercolors is that you start with the lightest color first. And what I'm doing is just called a base coat. So I'm just getting some color on here and I'm gonna go from um, right to left as we go. And that is because when you're painting with watercolors, you want the edge of whatever you're painting to stay wet. And that helps them blend together really nice. So see how I'm just kind of keeping it going from where I left off? Okay, and this first coat's gonna be pretty light. Don't worry if it's a little darker or a little lighter in each section. It's not gonna matter by the time I get them all mixed up. But, and watercolors are really fun too. A lot, some people get you know intimidated by them a little bit because they're afraid to make a mistake or they don't, you know, they don't know what to do and they've never done it before, but the thing I like about them is you can make all kind of mistakes and they still look cool. You know, Bob Ross used to call mistakes happy accidents. And uh, <laughs> I follow that same rule because with watercolor, you really can't go wrong. And especially in a painting like this. So what? You made a mistake. It looks creepier and cooler if you do make a mistake. And I'm just going to finish this off. Reduce. And I keep going back to the water because I want to keep this nice and wet. Ooh, check that out. That looks cool. Whoop, I got a little bit on the outside there. You can always take a little paper towel or your finger, and I'm just going in this way to get that out while it's still wet. And let me come back and fix this. And the beautiful thing about watercolor is, too, is even if it dries down a little bit, all you have to do is wet the paper again and activate it, and it'll... It'll blend up again. Okay, now I'm going to go back here. And while that's still a little bit wet, I'm going to darken it up just a little bit. 
And we'll put some shading and other things in here too to make this look extra creepy. But I'm just using the same color as I go back and work in this. And as long as part of it's dried down a little bit, you can get it wet again and it looks darker. So you can make shadows, you have shadow under his eye, and it's just the same color, it's just not as thin. So now when you're adding layers, you're getting a little bit thicker with your color and it's gonna be a little darker. And you can do the same thing with markers. You know, once your marker dries, if you have a light coat on it, you can go over it with a darker coat or you can go to the next darkest marker. So for example, if you have Copic markers or something like that, they have lots of different shades of color and you can use, you know, an orange and then you can use a darker orange even to, to make a shadow. I don't like to use black to make shadows unless I have to, or if I'm using, you know, like a grayscale drawing that everything's black and white, because black takes over everything so fast and it's, it's hard to control sometimes, especially for a, an artist that doesn't have a lot of experience. The nice thing about this though, is you can get a little messy. I'm just kind of scribbling, scrumbling on here a little bit, getting a little bit of different tones of orange in there. Because our pumpkin is gonna look awesome. This pumpkin's like invading your town. And maybe we'll put a little house underneath here to make him look like he's flying over the rooftops. Okay, we're gonna let that dry and we'll come back for the next layer and the next step right after that. Okay guys, it's all dry now. And I think you kind of get an idea of what we're doing with the watercolor painting. I'm gonna add some water right to the bat wings this time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this really nice and wet. You probably can't tell. Well, maybe you can, I don't know. But you might not be able to tell so much from just looking through the camera, but I'm, I'm just working that water in, get it nice and wet. And then I'm going to get a little bit of black. And I'm just going to draw a line all the way across one side of the wing to the other. And what that's going to do is it's going to start bleeding into the water. And I'm just going to take a little more water. Just let that bleed out. And then I'm just gonna add some more black. See how easy it is to move it around at that point? And we're just gonna get a base on here. And then I'm just gonna go in. I'm gonna fill that back in. And I'll just like moving it around and swooshing it and working it into the fibers of the paper. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Let's do that. How do you guys like working with watercolors? I know a lot of people get scared and intimidated by it and because they can't control it, I guess, as accurately as you can some other things. But I think that's the cool thing about it. I love the happy accidents as the late, great Bob Ross used to say. And, ooh, look at that bleeding down into that. That is cool. And it gives it an extra kind of neat, creepy effect. Okay, that makes me want to add a little more to the other side too. So I'm gonna do that while it's still nice and wet. And just botch it around there a little bit. Okay, always rinse out your brush after you're done using a color. Don't let the brush set in the cup. Okay, here's my cup. Don't stick the brush in and just let it sit in there because what it'll do is it will dissolve all the glue that holds the bristles in and your bristles will fall out. And you'll get rust and water underneath here and it leaks down into the barrel of the brush and it makes that wood swell and crack and it'll split and your brushes won't last as long. So take good care of your brushes. After you rinse it out, just set it somewhere to dry. While that's drying, we're gonna add a little more color. And this time I'm gonna go back in with 
the black again. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the wings. So I'm going to put some water in there and get the paper wet. And I'm just going to add, oh, that's cool, little drops of color in there. And I'm going to let that spread out a little bit. And while that's spreading out, I'm going to come over here, do the same thing on this side. Uh oh, that's a lot of water. If you get too much water on your brush, just have a paper towel handy and you can soak up a little bit of that water if you need to. Let's see what this does. Oh, cool. All right. See, that's the nice thing about watercolor paints. You can play with them and do all kind of crazy stuff. All right, now we're gonna take it up another notch. I'm gonna come back up here to the wings and I'm going to add water to it again. This time, we want it to be nice and wet. So I'm just tapping some water on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of salt. This is just sea salt. Doesn't matter what kind you use. And we're just going to get a little bit in our hand. Just a little bit like that. I'm going to take a little pinch of salt and I'm going to just kind of randomly sprinkle it on my wing. And then I'm going to come over on the other side, do this wing, and do the same. And what you'll notice is that the salt starts spreading out in the paint and you'll get these really cool effects. I'm even going to put a little bit in his eyes because I think that's just sweet. Now, if you get too much extra salt in your hand, you can pour it back in the you know, container or the dish or whatever. All right, now this time we're gonna get a little water on our brush, but we're not gonna mix it into the paper. We're gonna go straight in, and we're gonna get some green out of your palette, and we're just gonna paint the stock green. So now what I'm doing in the little speed it up portion of our video is I'm just adding some details in color, darkening the wings, darkening in the eyes, and I'm just using straight black with a little bit less water. And if you want to, you can add a little purple in there. It gives a little neat coloration in the wings, uh, detailing some parts on the stem. Whatever you want to do in this part, this is where you make it your own. Do you remember a little bit ago I said that Maybe I was gonna put a little house top and make it look like he was flying over and invading. Well, I did this. I added a bunch of pumpkins, redid it on a bigger piece of paper, and added the whole neighborhood getting invaded. What do you guys think? I think it came out pretty good, if I do say so myself. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you drew and painted along. And stay tuned for the next video. See you then. God bless.